It's rare that an eighth grader has their whole life planned out, but every eighth grader isn't Kaylee Gilchrist. The daughter of two-time Olympic swimmer Sandy Gilchrist knew from a young age exactly what she wanted. Sandy represented Team Canada in the 1960s, but earlier this year he sat down to ask Kaylee about her Olympic dreams and a return to Tokyo for the Gilchrist family this summer. I had this school project in eighth grade. I was 12 years old and I wrote, you've seen it a million times, but I wrote, um, they will ask, like, write about what you want to do to accomplish in your future. And it was, I want to be on the varsity Newport Harbor Water Bowl team. I want to go to USC on athletic scholarship. And I wrote, I want to compete in the 2012-2016 games. So maybe I got the dates wrong off by one Olympic Games, but there's always been in the back of my mind, I want to go to two Olympics. And it's probably just following in your footsteps because I want to go to SC and go to two Olympic Games like you. You know, talking about going to the Olympics in the same games as my dad and who knows if there's any, you know, father-daughter relationship that has that opportunity in Tokyo besides us. Um, but then there's going to be another step of actually making it happen, which I think is going to be really special if it all pans out. You know, I just grew up as a Trojan. If you look at any little kid photos back in the day, Ally and I are in SC sweatshirts. We go to SC games. Like, that's just how we were brought up. And then when I had opportunity to go there, I was like, yeah, obviously I'm going to go. But then when we started walking campus and I saw, you know, my dad's name in the Olympic uh, history books or on the pool wall with all everything you swam, I think that's when I recognized, I was like, whoa, he was kind of a big deal. And then him and my uncle, Alan, have benches right by the dungeon, which is our indoor swimming pool. And just saw like kind of how much the Gilchrist, the two of them, you know, were successful in their swimming days there. You know, he won a national championship there as well, or a couple, I'm not even sure. And then having like the same type of feeling at SC. My mom and sister didn't make it because it was Allie's graduation at U of A. So my dad flew from Tucson, right? Phoenix. From Phoenix and went straight to Boston. And then we won and the stands aren't like that close to the pool and I remember like we're all celebrating hugging and then like I had to swim to the side and like make eye contact with him I just remember like give him two big thumbs up and that was like pretty cool uh, knowing that he just traveled I haven't seen him yet that entire weekend and I know like mom and Allie were I think they were driving home watching it live too yeah. or something like that yeah. yeah and then so to share that moment at SC and then Rio was really really cool when they won the uh, uh, 2013 NCAA championship she walked out, I'm gonna get emotional. No, she you're making me get emotional. She walked out and she found me and she stared at me and then she raised her hand. No question about it. The same thing happened in Brazil. She walked up, she zeroed in on me, she found it and we knew, we talked. It was very emotional. Then, then everybody was all over her, you know, <laughs> and, but, but we had this look. And I, I knew it, and she found me, and that was it. She was going to find me no matter where I was. And that was maybe only five seconds. To this day, it was extremely emotional to me. It was a somewhat a traumatic summer for you. Um, tell me how you've come through it and how you feel now about it. Um, and are you fully recovered from your injury? July 26, we won world championships in South Korea and Gwangju, and then we went out that night to celebrate. Paige and I were the last ones standing up top with a bunch of the guys, and uh, you know the balcony collapsed, and I had to get rushed to the hospital um, and go into surgery a few hours later. And it kind of took me a while to wrap my mind about what really happened, and I don't know if you want to call it optimism or stupidity, but I was just like, oh, no biggie. Like, I'll be back in the water in no time. I was like, I don't think we're gonna have to cancel our plans we had. And then I think it took a few days to realize like, this was a serious injury, you know, and I'm so fortunate that it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. And then hearing that I was like, centimeters away from, millimeters away from ending my sporting career forever, uh, that was like a hard pill to swallow, but also kind of gave me this sense of like, well, I get a second chance, obviously at life, but at sports too. So why wouldn't I give it my all in the next year? So I think like the moment I could start working out, finally got cleared, it was like I was in the gym and Larnie Bokarian, who's our amazing trainer, dubbed my comeback or my rehab as the Mamba mission. You've got a very good attitude. Um, I was particularly impressed, I think last Sunday, when the re the, all the team was, was resting, and you got learning and went back to the pool for another 
10 200s that's the kind of person you are and i think that that people understand that so i hate to say this but if something like that hap had to happen to somebody on the team you probably could step up deal with it and um, in another month or two you don't even know what happened yeah i guess i mean i've said this to the team before but i'm just thankful that it was me and not them um not i'm I, i'm sure they could all handle it everyone on the team is strong but i'm i'm fine with what happened to me there's never like any regret or like any questioning of why me i'm like okay this happened let's make the most of it and that's always how i've been so we found i found joy in you know the daily tasks and the challenges and triumphs that come with an injury and i've never been injured before so this is all new to me but um it's pretty cool to not even be able to wiggle your toes one day and looking back on it just a couple months later you know i'm i'm running and you know this morning i jumped some rope so <laughs> i was particularly impressed when you said when i said well kaylee what are you going to think about those scars they're not scars they're battle wounds <laughs> Yeah, I think I've gotten to the point where I can look down at them and not be uh, brought back to the dark times. I look down at them and I'm proud because it reminds me of, you know, what the work I've put in in the past three months um, and kind of the perspective I, I've gained and the person who I, who I want to become from the accident. You know, I recognize that there's, I want to be better in so many aspects of my life and it was just a reminder going through something like that. Um, but there's still, you know, a lot of work. Thinking about Tokyo, the first emotion that comes up is anxiety. You know, I've had some adversity, obviously, in my injury with South Korea, and then on top of the roster being cut to 11. Um, so I don't like to really think too much about, you know, the end goal, but rather just the day-to-day, -day. and I think that's why I'm putting so many hours in the day-to-day -day and just getting excited for all the improvements that happen daily, and then just really trusting the process that those little things will eventually be big things, and that big thing is being in Tokyo? For me, it's going to be absolutely overwhelming. First of all, you know, with what happened to Kaylee this past summer, and for her to have the opportunity to recover and move forward and possibly make the team is, is, is overwhelming. And, and if she is fortunate enough to make the team and we end up in Tokyo, um, you know, I'm certainly getting older, and to look back at, at from 64 and to see Kaylee here in, in, in 20 is, is going to be very special. It won't just be another game. No, it'll be, it'll be a history, a lot of history. Something I'll be very proud of. It'll be pretty special if we're fortunate enough to, to be able to go together. It's kind of crazy to look back, you know, five years now, going to be six, that I might have an opportunity to go and play down there. And I think just looking at old photos and seeing photos and hearing you talk about it more is just kind of adds a little bit fuel to the fire.